Today I'm revealing top three most common beginner mistakes in the openings that I see every day. To support the learning process, we'll take a look at short games where these mistakes are punished in an instructive way. Number one, opening up the position or attacking prematurely. Take a look at this position from an amateur beginner game. What is going on? Well, we had some sort of Sicilian opening. White is leading the development by quite a bit. We have three minor pieces developed and a safe king. Probably that counts as another one. So we have four in total versus only one developed piece for black. On the other hand, black has gained a lot of space in the center and on the queen side. And if they manage to keep the position quiet, keep the position closed, they will be able to deploy the pieces, perhaps to slightly bit better squares than white will, due to the support of these pawns. Because white is leading the development, white wants to open up the position, because once we open that up, means exchanging the pawns, the battle begins, the pieces start interacting with each other more, and then we have a flow of tactics stemming from it. However, for white, even if we achieve a move like d4 and we have something like capture, capture, that is not enough for white to overwhelm black with the lead in development because the position just did not open up enough. So if black were to continue with normal developing moves like bishop to b7, queen c7, a typical Sicilian move to keep an eye on e5, and then just get the king side out and eventually play d5, black has absolutely fantastic game. But in our game, black plays a move d5. That just goes against every single spirit that exists in this position. Black should do everything he can to keep the position closed. Now we're going to see how black is going to get tortured in open position and lose the game very quickly. So why did the correct decision here and open it up? We have pawn takes pawn. We have pawn takes back. And white is playing a fantastic move, d4. Black, not sensing the danger, just continues to accept all the pawns that white is giving to them. White is taking back. Black takes again and white takes. What do we have now? Is black happy with the outcome of seemingly equal material exchanges? I don't think so. They would love to finish the development of the pieces, but currently white is developing the initiative by attacking the pawn on d5. We have the semi-open e-file where we could attack the king of blacks, which is now vulnerable as there is no e-pawn for black. And so instead of developing, black already is on the ropes trying just to not lose on the spot. Bishop to b7 to support the pawn. We have rook to e1, an indirectly attacked king. Now black says, okay, I feel the danger. I have to castle as soon as possible. And we have bishop takes b5, which is not only a double check, it is a mate on the board. And this was a real game. These things where we're opening up the position prematurely with moves like d5 happen every day. Try to take a look at who is leading the development and most of the time is going to be white. Sometimes it could be black though if white doesn't play well. And you do not want to open it up or attack by exchanging the pawns when you're behind in development. Most common mistake number two, giving away lead in development by moving the same piece too many times without a good reason or making too many pawn moves. We have a position where white has developed their pieces to an optimal squares. Pawn in the center, two knights out, the bishop on c4. Black's bishop on e7 is solid, even though it's not as good as white's bishop on this diagonal. Maybe bishop to c5 would have been slightly bit more accurate objectively, but there's nothing wrong with bishop e7 on the other hand. And white could just continue with developing pieces by castling, then maybe playing moves like d3 or preparing a move like d4 with a normal game. Instead, our hero plays knight to g5. 
So a very typical idea to attack this vulnerable F7 point. However, here it's not good because black would just simply castle. Black can defend against the threat while developing a piece. And something to note is that two minor pieces are much better than the rook and a pawn. Even though mathematically it's like six points versus six, two pieces are much better than the rook and a pawn. Just like three pieces are much better than a queen. What we have as an outcome of this exchange is not only that black made a better trade, we got two pieces for a rook and a pawn as I have mentioned, but also black now leads the development. We have three pieces compared to one. So taking already an advice from the last example, what should black do? You can pause the video and try to think, what is the decision that black should take since we have such a lead in development? Yes, you're absolutely right. We should open up the position. We want to initiate a battle. Our king can quickly, with just one move, go back to where it was. And if you decided to do this before play d5, it's also absolutely fine. But now with d5, it's very important to open up the position so that black would fight. White in the game played f4. This is a wrong decision as it continues to open up the position. We had captures which again turn out to be not a good idea as only black pieces are getting more centralized as a result from that and we have another non-developing move rook to e1 simply going after a single attack now the position opened up black is leading the development thus black is able to develop initiate initiative which is going to be deadly white in the game played knight to e2 we play knight f4 we say Pin it to win it. There is too much pressure on e2 right now. And after d4, we had simply one material, and black is a piece up in a technically winning endgame. And the third, last but not least, not paying attention to what opponent is doing. Let me give you a good example. Uh, where thousands and actually tens of thousands of people are falling for because they're not following this tip. So we have b6, uh, non aggressive opening at least from the first glance, and white is continuing to grab the center, develop the pieces. Of course, this is not uh, hard to see that the pawn is under attack, and so we protect it while developing. And after the move bishop to b4, I open up the database on a website called Lee Chess, and I see 40,000 people playing bishop to d2. 40,000 people. When they're pinning our knight like this, the danger is not on the knight. The danger is that the knight is pinned or could be removed, and so we lose the protection over the pawn on e4. When they pin like this, most of the time danger is there. When they pin like this, most of the time danger is there. And so what white should do is simply protect the pawn with a move like bishop to d3. But we have 40,000 people playing bishop to d2 and simply losing a pawn like this. This comes from not paying attention to what opponent is doing. I'm not going to mention there are thousands of people who just drop the pawn to bishop e2 like this, right? Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is the reality. Hope if you can implement these three tips into the game, I know you can become a much stronger player. If you did enjoy the video, please put a like on this video to say thanks. Consider subscribing to my chess channel. It's absolutely free for you. And you could also consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. That's my full-time job for many, many years. I will be waiting. Uh, my contacts are on the right of the screen. Uh, wish you a wonderful day and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.